Hi Year 12, I just really wanted to quickly talk through your uh, related text material um, and obviously as I mentioned in class last week it's really important that you are starting to prepare and work on your chosen related text for your upcoming assessment. Um, obviously as I mentioned in class we as teachers aren't allowed to teach those related texts to you in advance. It's important to understand that the purpose of this related text is so that you're practicing your analysis skills. So the whole premise is ultimately giving you a chance to show us as markers what you're able to do in your own understanding of language in looking at a text and also the representation of human experiences. Really Year 12, if I can guide you, it's about recognizing that this is sort of a practice for what you're going to be asked to do in section one, which are those unseen texts in the short answer questions. You don't know what kind of text they're going to ask you to respond to. And so this related text is a bit of a practice uh, to develop your own analysis skills without being teacher directed. When you're searching, as it says there, for a quality text, um, it's really important that you're able to connect it somehow to our prescribed text, which is the Merchant of Venice. So you might be looking for elements where there's some similarities, where you can draw some uh, commentary on similar ideas or similar experiences or even similar language, um, or alternatively differences, how there's some striking kind of opportunity for you to then explore the differences in the two texts side by side. You've got there obviously your rubric and then as I've said down here, really important is to compare your prescribed text and related text by that two-step process, which again you should be aware of from what we've already looked at for our section one. The two steps are what ideas or meaning about human experiences are you able to identify and how has the composer of the text used their form, their features and their language to ultimately create that representation. All right. So as I've said down here, points to remember, you're being assessed in your upcoming assessment task on how well you analyze. And that needs to be your emphasis. How will you analyze your chosen related text? So it's not taught by us um, and we're not able to use any of the text that we've done in class. Um, there has been some clarification and I guess I'll say very upfront, it's probably best not to obviously use the example of Luca Lessons, Please Resist Me, just because there are some notes in our booklet now that have got some suggested analysis. What is better is actually to look at that text and the way it's been analysed in the booklet, even though we haven't taught it, um, and just see some of the, the language if that's um, going to help you then to be able to analyze your own text. All right. Um, what you're looking at also is that representation of human experiences, which is obviously what the module is about. So you're linking the analysis to the human experiences that are being represented in the text. Um, choose a related text year 12 that you are able to confidently analyze. And in this booklet, um, with some suggested related texts, I've made some choices around poetry because as I've mentioned, poetry might seem a little bit more obscure as a text, but the language is very overt and it's quite um, easy to identify language within poetry. You've also got some other options as we quickly move through. Um, ensure you're able, as I said, to draw some parallels in your discussion. And ultimately, it's about how well you then link that analysis to the given question in your assessment task. So the, the question still must drive your discussion of the two texts in your assessment work. Um, if you don't use one of these texts that is suggested, I'd really like you to have a chat to me or Mrs. Ratcliffe about your choice, um, just so we can actually know where you're thinking as a text um, and also give you some guidance in case it's a text that's on a prescribed list somewhere or alternatively, it may have been taught by another class or done in detail somewhere else. So if you don't choose one of the ones that we've got in this booklet, then please make sure you come and have a chat to us. It's kind of important for this assessment work. So what we've got here is now, I'm not going to talk through them other than just to give you a little bit of a, an input, uh, overview, I guess, about these texts. The first one um, or the first category of texts are your spoken word performance poems. Um, they are 
very contemporary style of text and very engaging in terms of what they're representing about experiences and also some really overt uses of language. So this one by Cap Capital Letters by Omar Musa. Have a look at that. There's a link there. And then obviously the transcript. Um, what Will Become of Us, which is a, a more recent Luca Lesson poem. I know you looked at Please Resist Me in Class in the notes last week. But this is another poem by Luca Lesson. Um, have a look at it. It's, it's an excellent poem. Um, and of course, there are some parallels in what you looked at in Please Resist Me, particularly in light of the language. So there's the script of that as well. Um, then the last performance poem is quite an interesting contemporary poet, Kay Tempest. She's non-binary. She was um, originally Kate Tempest but she has renamed herself K or themselves K Tempest. Um, her poem Man Down is the one I've chosen for this related book. So have a consideration of that. Um, these three poets are all very well regarded. They're very, um, to, well, Luca Lesson and K Tempest are both on the Mod C prescription list for HSC English. So they're, they're very highly renowned uh, slam poets within Ness's guidelines, but also in terms of teaching. So if you're interested in a slam poem, those three are suggested options alongside The Merchant of Venice. Traditional poems, um, this one, Refugee B Blues by Auden, is obviously one that we haven't taught in our critical study of literature last term. Um, Again, it's in your booklet with no additional notes. So if you're wanting to have another look at an Auden poem, because obviously you're familiar with his language, the way that he writes, some of his context. Um, again, this is a very good one alongside some of the ideas for Merchant. Um, In the Park by Gwen Harwood. Again, Gwen Harwood is a very well-renowned poet. She has been on the HSE list for many years and still remains. Um, one of her poems is still on the Mod C list. Uh, this particular poem, um, an interesting one looking at particularly gender. Um, so again, a shorter poem, but you can certainly get a good understanding perhaps of what's being represented, particularly when you look at the context, if you're interested in exploring that particular poem. The other one, this is um, a less known poet, Refugees by Brian Bilston. An interesting poem because it's got a bit of a, a duplicity. You read it one way and then you read it from the bottom up. So some interesting concepts and a, and a dual meaning and a difference in the way that the poem is read, depending on the way that you read it. So again, some very obvious links to what we've looked at in The Merchant of Venice. Another text type is the speeches, obviously the spoken uh, presentations. Um, this one is one that I will show you some excerpts in class of. Um, I've used this previously. It is on Netflix. Um, the whole presentation I don't show in class because there is some very explicit language and some very um, explicit content that Hannah Gadsby uh, refers to. And um, obviously in a classroom setting, that's not particularly appropriate for us to get into too much heavy content like that. But this particular speech is a very rich example of human experiences and particularly aligns with anomalies, paradoxes and inconsistencies. Um, the important thing to remember, Year 12, is you don't need to look at the whole text. I suggest you kind of look at a, a quantity of it and then maybe in your analysis you could focus in on a section if you don't want to talk about the language in the whole particular text. You've only got to do a little bit of analysis in your assessment because um, you've only got a five minute presentation for two texts. So um, I've given you some of the excerpt. Um, again, just be conscious there is some language and there is some, some content in this. She's a stand-up comedian, um, but has a very rich story and a very impacting um, situation that she shares through the lens of comedy, again, with some good links to our play. Um, the next speech I've given you underneath that is Stan Grant's. Um, Stan Grant's Racism is Killing the Australian Dream. Stan Grant is an Indigenous man, very well known in media circles in Australia. Um, this is obviously a speech addressing 
a lot around um, the mistreatment of our First Nations people. So again, if you're interested in exploring that, it's it's a very good speech. Um, you can certainly see that presented, but you've got the transcript there. This one is actually an excerpt from a lecture by Tim Winton. Again, Tim Winton, a very uh, popular and well-regarded Australian writer. He's written a number of texts. Again, he still has texts on the HSC uh, prescriptions list for texts. So this one is interesting because he's writing, exploring misogyny, um, but from a male perspective. So we get a lot of texts, obviously, in, in the contemporary lens from that female voice, uh, challenging some of these entrenched patriarchal notions. But this is obviously written from the male voice. Um, and that's why, obviously, it's a very good one to consider alongside some of what's being represented in our play, perhaps. Um, so have a look at that. Remember, it is a lecture, but he does write in a very colloquial, engaging way. Um, the last two extracts I've given you, one is an autobiographical extract and the other is a prose fiction short story. Again, you don't need to use the entire extract if you decide to use this as a related text. This is a particular autobiography written by um, Beiruz Bakani, who actually wrote the whole thing um, on a mobile phone as he was being uh, kept in captivity on Manus Island in detention. Um, it's a very, very powerful um, reflection of his experiences, and this is the opening chapter. So I've given you the opening chapter. It uses some very rich language, and again, you're getting the experience of ultimately a, a refugee being kept in detention. Um, again, it's long, so you don't need to use the whole thing, but I've kept it there in case you're interested in reading how he gets to some sort of you know, conclusion in that first chapter. This is a short story by Ray Bradbury. I have taught this in the past, um, All Summer in a Day. Ray Bradbury, um, very interesting writer, again, has some texts on our HSC prescription list and all of the writers here, Year 12, I've chosen because they are quality texts by well-regarded writers. They they are already recognised in their writing by Nessa, and that's often a good indicator of a good text. Um, so all summer in a day, obviously, you've got an interesting representation here of um, marginalisation. And again, it, it's a dystopian text, so it's meant to be not realistic. It's obviously written... Um, on a different planet and in a futuristic setting. So, but you're getting again, the representation of human experiences quite palpably within this short story. And again, I think there's some good parallels that you might be able to draw if you're interested in looking at a prose fiction text. So that is a text that's been written in a story narrative style. So that's sitting there as well. They're the text I've um, suggested for you to have a look at. Again, if you decide not to use one of those texts, if you've got your heart set on a different text, then as I said, that's more than okay. It's just about having um, a conversation with either myself or Mrs. Ratcliffe just to clarify whether that's a, a text that's an appropriate choice for your assessment. Um, we would hate for you to have any kind of issues in that assessment work. Um, but these are obviously ones that I have chosen as good kind of indicators for you to consider. All right, that's this lesson. Have a look through those, make some decisions and start to do some of that analysis so that you can obviously start to build some writing alongside what we're doing with the play because you're juggling both of the texts in your upcoming assessment work. All right, good on you guys. Keep up the hard work today while you're at home and I will see you back in class tomorrow. Take care.